Hey, Lou, don't forget to start recording. See, I got you. I got you. Thank you. I already did. I think I did. Yeah, you're recording. Let everyone know that you are being that they're being recorded. All right. I already contacted Spectrum. Spectrum. Yeah, Adam. Yeah. Stupid. It's because there was an outage over here on my side of town. So the way that he was explaining it, that it never refreshed or anything like that, I was like, bro, I unplugged it and plugged it back in. So yeah. Did you count to 10? Yeah, I was like, I actually went to like 20 and then I plugged it back in because I forgot that I actually unplugged it. So. See what a human uh, human anatomy does to you? Makes me makes you forget it all. Yeah, uh, I'm like, forget. So. Okay, where was I at? The musculoskeletal system. So, give me functions of the musculoskeletal system. Protection. Okay, protection of what? Organs. Organs and vital organs. Okay, what else? Motor control. Allows to move. Structure. Ability. I'm old. I, I don't have that good of a memory anymore. Okay, so somebody said movement. Yes, we're able to move about, run, motor control. I could do this. Sign language Tourette's. Uh, what else? Um, structure. Structure. Okay. Without the musculoskeletal system, we would just be a blob. Uh, uh oh. Oh. Uh. Damn these people! Fifteen a night. They're sending me a marketing email or marketing text. Um. Yeah. Without it, we would be an amoeba. So we're able to stand tall, erect. Uh, what else? Oh. Their, their little brain is fried. They're like, oh, hell no. Too much information for my little head. Miss Esley, did your husband remember me? He did. <laughs> did you tell him I talked about him, but yeah. I didn't talk about him? Yeah, he's right here. He can hear you. <laughs> oh. Hi, Christian. Oh, can, you, can you see me? Yeah. I can now. Lou? Not much. How you been? Good, good. Just working, taking care of baby. <laughs> oh, good. <laughs> oh, nice. Gotta uh -huh. <laughs> you gotta let the wife study, learn. So you got you got daddy duties tonight. Yeah. <laughs> but now does he have diaper duties too? Oh yeah. Okay. <laughs> I give him credit for that because I never do diapers. <laughs> uh so where were we? Um so structure movement. Oh, there's one more thing. I don't know if it talked about it in the book. It should have. Anyone drink Sunny D? Yes. That's my go-to after a hangover. So if we see you coming to class with some Sunny D, we shouldn't ask. No, I wouldn't. Okay. Okay. Especially after Thursday nights, when, when everything opens back up. Bars aren't opening up yet. No, I know, but like after Thursday nights, like when everything opens back up again. Oh, but you can't have it delivered to your house, so you can still go to the, well, I'm used to saying liquor store. Yeah, but it's not the same. Yeah, it is. It's cheaper. No, because I want to go dance. I can't go dance. Yeah, you can just turn on the radio in your house. So put your your 
Apple iTunes on and and pump up the jams. Yeah, but who am I supposed to dance with? You can't dance country by yourself. Yeah, you can. Just get in front of a mirror and country line dance with yourself. You can't country like it's not country line dancing. Okay, all right. I- it is. But here's the thing. Guess what? You get to go go home with yourself afterwards. So it's like a sure bet. Wait, you do that every night. Does it count? Yes. So why did I bring up Sunny D? <laughs> the stores minerals. Which minerals? No, actually, uh huh. What was that, Miss Santana? I didn't say anything. Oh, okay. I just saw you, your name bold up. Uh, the, oh. the reason I brought Sunny D is that that's the way I remember it because the sun gives us vitamin D and the skin synthesizes that vitamin D. So if you're low in vitamin D, go outside. <clears throat> so, um, all right, what are the structures of the musculoskeletal system? Is that? What are the structures of the musculoskeletal system? What was that? His internet. Yeah, his internet's messed up. No, I'm not drunk. So, structures consist of ligaments, tendons, muscles, and connective tissues, such as cartilage. Okay. The musculoskeletal system is a really important system because, again, like we said, the functions... It, it helps synthesize vitamin D, okay. but it provides protection. It provides a framework. It provides structure. Um, what else? Um, Lou, are you going to yes. leave like that PowerPoint like on for later or no? I've already, when I checked earlier, it was already on... Uh, on the files. Oh, okay. Yeah, chapter seven and eight are already on there. Okay. At least I think it is. Let me double check. Yeah, they're on there. I think it's showing that I put them a few seconds ago, but I didn't do it a few seconds ago. They've been on there. Yeah, I, I put them on there. So. Okay. All right. Um, now, as far as the skeletal system, the skeletal of uh, musculoskeletal, um, the six components, the skull, the spinal column, the thorax, which is the chest, the pelvis, and then finally the extremities, the upper and lower extremities. So that's your six. Now, the other thing about the... the um, the skeletal system, it further divides it into the axial and the appendicular skeleton. So the axial skeleton, the way to remember the axial skeleton is the axis of the body. So down the center of the body, the axial. So here we have the head or the skull and then the spinal column. That's the axial, because it goes down the axis of the body. 
Okay. The appendicular, oh, uh, the axle also consists of the rib cage. The appendicular, I think about appendages. You see that relationship? Appendicular appendages, which means the upper and lower extremities, oh, right there, along with the pelvis. So, questions? Lou. Yes, ma'am. Jose, Jose's internet went out. He just told me. Okay. Yeah, he's been he's been telling me about that. Okay. All right, I'm back. Oh, okay. See? There you go. Yeah, it's still going out. I'm gonna find it. My bad. All right. So appendicular and axial skeleton. You don't have to remember all those bones on there. As we go along throughout the course, we'll, we'll talk about some of the bones, but the major ones we've talked about today, the humerus, the radius, the ulna, the femur, the tibia, the fibula, the sternum, the ribs, the spinal column, the pelvis. Okay, those are pretty much it. So here we have the skull. Remember we we're talking about the bones? You have the frontal or the front, your forehead, your periatal, right in here, your temporal, so your temple. Yeah, let me let me change that up a little bit. So your temporal right in here. There's a zygomatic, which is your cheekbone. Your occipital bone, which is right back here, the back of your head. Uh, frontal, temporal, parietal. Uh, your maxilla, which is right in here, and then your mandible. So that's your skull. And we talked about the spinal column. The first seven bones. Actually, here's a good picture. You see these little processes right here? Actually, let me just switch to see the hot air works. You see those things right there at the end? Yeah, see those? Yeah. See? No? no? Okay. Yes. That's, that's what yes. I was telling you earlier. Those are the processes. So we talked about the first part of the of the of the spinal column. So we know that's the neck. And what were those bones called? Cervical. Cervical. The cervical spine. Cervical. Oh, actually, wrong one. Uh, the cervical actually means neck and because I've been doing this a long time whenever I hear cervical I automatically think of the neck I don't think about the cervix um, and so you just so you know cervix actually me means little neck okay so there's cervical so the first seven bones are the cervical spine and then the next 12 12 bones is your spine And then what were then the next section has five bones. And what is it called? The lumbar. The lumbar. Okay, pay attention to this because I said it the other day to the other class and they forgot it and they got it wrong. Next you have the sacrum, which is this wing shaped thing right here. The sacrum is about three to five segments that are fused into one. So you have one sacrum. 
And then lastly, your tailbone, this little thing right here, that is your coccyx, C-O-C-C-Y-X, coccyx, coccyx. That one is four to five segments fused into one. Coccyx is about as big as the traditional postage stamp. So it's small, but you can break it. You land hard in your butt, you can break your coccyx. All right. Questions on this on the spine? Yes. How many segments was the the first one that you mentioned? Three to five. All right. So the thorax, you have the ribs. Now, how many bones are there in the, in the thoracic spine? One, uh, seven. Thoracic spine. One through 12. There's 12. Oh, so the yeah, seven 12. is the cervical spine. Your neck, the cervical spine has seven bones. And your thorax or the thoracic spine it has 12 bones. Anybody know how many ribs there are? How many ribs there are? 12. 12. I wonder if that has anything, if there's any correlation to the thoracic spine. Yes, mm. I think. Yeah, because it's in the middle. There you go. You have a, a pair of ribs or a set of ribs for every thoracic spine. Okay. Uh, we talked about sternum, the ribs, the T-spine, the L-spine, the lumbar. The scapula is the shoulder blade, the humerus, big bone. There's nothing funny about it when you hit your funny bone. The radius is going to be this bone right here. And the way you remember it is it's on your thumb side. That's your radius. Whereas this is your ulna. Okay. Then you have lumbar. You have the, the pelvis. Now the pelvis is really bones. You have the ilium, which is this part right here, and that's why this bridge right here, that's called the iliac spine or your iliac crest. You have your symphysis bone right here, and the two symphysis bones join up right here in the middle. And that is called the symphysis pubis. That juncture between the two uh, pubis bones. And that's why the area is called the pubic area. And then down here, there's, a, there's two bones. They kind of curve down here. I can't curve very well. And those are your ischium. So the pelvis consists of the ilium the ischium, and the pubis. And then there's your femur right there. you got your carpals, your metacarpals, your phalanges, your fingers. The bones in the fingers are called phalanges. Questions on that part? Okay. There's your patella, the kneecap, the femur again, the tibia. And you, you notice the difference between the tibia, this big one right here, and the fibula, this, it's how it's smaller. The tarsals are the ankle bones. And then you have the metatarsals. So you have metacarpals and metatarsals. The, the tarsals are down the foot. The carpals are the metacarpals. And so, just so I could see. Can't see myself. There I am. I'm hidden. All right. So this area right here, the bones, you have five of them. You have actually one right here, two, three, four, five. Those are your metacarpals. Your carpals are in the wrist right in here. And then these right here are your phalanges. 
The thumb has two, and there's three, 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 and three. So phalanges. Okay. Okay, let's see. Talked about the upper extremities, lower extremities. As far as joints, uh, I don't get too much into the joints, and they usually don't ask you too much about joints. But just understand that joints allow for the movement. Me doing this, that's the joint here. Okay? Doing this, that's a joint. So we have, um, and they get more specific, but um, we have immovable joints, we have slightly movable, and we have freely movable. Immovable are like the sutures. That's what they call those joints in the skull, sutures. They don't move. Once you're born, they, they start shifting like the tectonic plates of the earth. And once they get fully where they need to be, they fuse together and they won't move again. Okay. The slightly movable with your spine, how you can turn. So there's very little movement. That's why it's slightly. And then freely movable, like your hip and your shoulder, and even your fingers. Those are freely movable joints. Although it's more the like the, the hip one there that they're showing. That's a uh, ball and socket, has a wider range of motion. I can't really turn my, my finger all the way around. I'll break it if I try it. Okay. And so the motions, we talked about flexion and extension earlier, and we talked about abduction and adduction. What's adduction again? Adding to the body. Add it to the body. And the abduction? Going away. Away from the body. So, who knows what circumduction is? Goes around. So, like with your shoulders, right? Yep. But we don't use circumduction very much. Now, the other one, pronation and supination. The, the, those terms sound a little familiar. Yes. What does it sound like? Prone and supine position. Okay. So with that said, show me. Let me get my camera. So, or I could see people. Show me what pronation and supination is with your hand. What? Okay. So, okay. Esley, go back. Let me pin you. Okay, do that again. So show me sup supination. Who are you asking? <laughs> you were you asking me? Yeah. Show me supination. So that's like this, right? Yep. Now show me pronation. I don't know if you guys were able to see that. Why is... Show me Wait, supination. What again? Esley, show me supination again. Wait. Supination. No, supination. Okay. Why is that supination? Uh, it's a supine position. There you go. Oh. And pronation? Prone position. Uh -huh. Down on your stomach. There you go. So you guys see how knowing terms is going to help you with other things? All righty then. All right. Type of joints, I'm not too worried about those. But you can see you have the diagram in your book. So like I said, ball and socket, hip, shoulder, condyloid, and fingers. Gliding joint, that's your shoulder. Hinge, like your elbow.
Okay. Now, oh, the, the other thing I forgot about a, a function of the, of the musculoskeletal system, specific the skeletal system. It is responsible for creating blood. And that is in the marrow of the bone, especially long bones. So the big example is the femur. The femur creates a lot of blood. And so let me show you. You see that picture there? So not only do you have the blood vessels, the arteries, but inside in the marrow, there's a lot of blood. So a fracture to like the, uh, the femur will cause a lot of bleeding. Just know that a one fractured femur, a person can lose about 20% of their blood volume. Okay. At 40% blood volume, the person's almost unconscious. More than 40%, they are unconscious and they're close to death. If not, they will die. So you're halfway there. That's not a good thing, being halfway there to death. Although some of us are already passed halfway, but that's another story. Um, so there's that rich supply. we got to think about that when we have uh, bone breaks. Now, any questions on that? I, no yes i have a question yes like you know how you said that that one has like veins inside the bone right arteries yes is that the only one that has it or there's other ones that we have to be aware of others but the, the more important one well the pelvis also has a rich blood supply okay so like I said, one fractured femur is 20%, one liter of blood. Two fractured femurs, that's 40%. So they're, they're going to the trauma. They're probably level one trauma. Mm -hmm. The other one is a, an unstable pelvis. Just that one alone, you could lose about two liters of blood. So we're at 40%. So. All right, let's see. Any other questions? All right, as far as muscle now, the muscles contract and relax to uh, cause movement. And that's done by electrical impulses. The brain says, do this and flip somebody off. I'm not going to flip anybody off. But my brain is telling the muscles to contract and relax so I could do this. Okay. That's one of the things. Now, we have three types of muscle. The first one is skeletal muscle. So the muscle that we're able to do this with, that's skeletal muscle. What you need to remember about skeletal muscle, so in your um, in your flask card, you put skeletal muscle, or first off, three types of muscle, skeletal, smooth, and cardiac. And then when you get to the skeletal muscle card, it's, you can write down, it's voluntary muscle controlled by the brain. So like your pectoralis major, your, your bicep, the tricep, that kind of stuff, those are muscles. Your butt, gluteus maximus. It's voluntary muscle controlled by the brain? Yes. And again, examples would be your pectoralis, your bicep, your tricep, your gluteus maximus, your gastrocnemius. It's your calf muscle. Sternocleidal mastoid lets you do this. 
you. The next type of muscle is smooth muscle. Smooth muscle is involuntary. In other words, we don't have to think about it for it to work. The biggest example of smooth muscle is your, di is your digestive tract. So, for example, the esophagus, the stomach, the intestines. Do you have to think about moving the the food from your mouth into your stomach and then in turn moving it from your stomach out out your uh, rectum and anus into the toilet no, no right do you imagine you're eating take a drink of my monster so this is an action Now, here I go. I got to think about moving it down. <laughs> I'm still working on getting that, that drink into my stomach, okay? Probably it's a nice cold beer, yeah. <laughs> the problem is I don't drink. Not what I heard. Not what I heard. <laughs> Hey, you, what, said you were drinking Jack and Coke the other night, though, and then you chugged it at the end. That bottle of Jack, well, there's a bottle of Jack I've had for at least 10 years, if not more. And then uh, a former student gave me a, gave me a bottle of Jack Daniels, and that's still. So I really don't drink. I heard you went to Lake. Went to where? Lake or something like that. Where? Lake. Lit? Lit. Clint? No. I, have, I have a bottle of Johnny Walker. No, click. Click? I don't know what where that place is at. Where is that place? I don't know. That's what I heard. You have misinformation. The last time I went to a bar was twenty eighteen. Yeah, sometime in twenty eighteen. I think. I don't remember. Yeah, I really I really don't. But anyway. So going back to the smooth muscle, I don't have to think about moving that drink, that beer, down into, into my stomach. Now, the question to you guys is, what is that process called? Peristalsis. 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 Yes. Now, the process of peristalsis moves that food from the, from the mouth down the esophagus and the stomach. Does that also apply down below through your intestines? Yes. Yes, it does. Have you noticed that after you eat breakfast in the morning, next thing you got to do is go take your morning, you know what, go number two? Yeah. Yeah. And that's because peristalsis, while it's working up on top, it's also working down below. So now you know. All right. So smooth muscle is involuntary muscle usually found in the, the digestive tract. Okay. There's other places, but it's primarily in the digestive tract. The last type of muscle is cardiac muscle. The cool thing about cardiac muscle is it is involuntary. We don't have to think about the, the heart uh, beating. Okay. And it has a very unique feature. Yeah. Uh... 
Nobody knows the unique feature about, about cardiac muscle? It's called automaticity. What, auto, what does automaticity stand for? It can generate uh -huh. an impulse on its own? Yes. It has the ability to generate its own electrical impulse. That's why I say the brain can live, I'm sorry, the heart can live without the brain, but the brain can't live without the heart. Because the heart is going to keep beating. As long as it's still beating, you could remove it out. And you can keep it alive by feeding it blood okay. or feeding it oxygen, really. And just like in Mortal Kombat, come here. And they go, and the dude gets the guy's heart and pulls it out, and there it is. And it's going, still beating in the dude's hand. That's yeah. because of automaticity the ability to gen generate its own electrical impulse. Okay. Uh, so let me show you this. So here's here's your skeletal muscle. Okay. There's the skeletal muscle. There's the smooth uh, muscle down here. And then the cardiac muscle, only found in the heart. Okay. Question on the muscles of the body. The three no. times. Okay. No. <clears throat> All right. So here, uh, who was it? Ricardo. No, this wasn't Ricardo. This was uh, Dylan. It was Dylan we were using, right? Yeah. Dylan continues managing the patient's airway and ventilation. Ricardo was, has directed another EMT to apply direct pressure to the growing wound as he applies occlusive dressing to the chest wounds. And that's because we don't want any air going into the chest. One of the chest wounds is two centimeters inferior to the left clavicle in the midclavicular line, and the other is four centimeters inferior to the nipple in the midaxillary line. Okay. So now, how can a stab wound to the chest impair ventilation and oxygenation? Can puncture a lung. Okay, what else? <laughs> Remember what I said about uh, inside the chest? So air can build up within the chest cavity and it could also put pressure against the heart. So it's going to make the patient breathe faster, shallower, uh, have increased difficulty breathing. Uh, then the patient's not getting enough oxygen so they can't circulate as much. Okay. How can applying an occlusive dressing over the chest wounds be a benefit to the patient? I just said, why? Because it's covering up the hole, and we don't want any more air going inside that chest. Okay. Damn, everybody's here. I'm impressed. So, so you guys, uh, any questions of anything that we've covered up to this point? Yes. Let's hear it. Um, so a question about when the lungs are building up air, causing pressure on the heart, is that when uh -huh. oxygen is being caught in the pleural space, like a pneumothorax, or is well, it something it, else? It's, it's, it's something else. It's starting 
uh, at the initial stages, it's what we call a pneumothorax. Pneumo oh, okay. meaning, meaning a lung. No, I'm sorry, meaning air. Pulmo is lung. So pneumo is air, thorax in the chest. As that builds up, that pressure builds up, eventually it, it can push against the great vessel, the aorta, and the heart. And so now the efficiency of the heart pumping is diminished because it's going to work against a lot of pressure. So normally the heart is like this. But now that pressure is going, so how effective is the pumping going to be? In other words, how effective is it going to be at getting the blood out of itself? Not very effective. Not very effective. So what's happening to the oxygen delivery throughout the body? It's being compromised. Exactly. And so that's what we would call a tension pneumothorax. And that oh. is a severe emergency that actually takes precedence over CPR. Okay. All right. Any other questions? No. Okay. So the next system we're going to go over is the respiratory system. Now, I want to make sure you guys understand respiratory because, number one, we deal with a lot of respiratory patients. Number two, where we have identified our students, they, they struggle with the different parts of registry. But one of the biggest is airway, ventilation. In other words, the respiratory system stuff. So I'm trying to make sure that you know this system. You understand what's involved in the respiratory system and also what the normal function is. And I will introduce a little bit of abnormal stuff as well. But once you understand the concepts, it's going to be easier to think about what could be wrong with the patient. Remember what I said. You can't know what abnormal is until you know what normal is. And so by knowing the normal very well, you could identify the abnormal. Now, the other thing, and I've told you, I'm trying to teach you guys to think. And so I'm not going to ask you guys to memorize a list of signs and symptoms. In other words, if a patient is suffering from this, what are they going to show? When I went through EMT school, we literally had to memorize a list of signs and symptoms. Once I got to paramedic school, my instructor was, guys, don't worry about memorizing that list of signs and symptoms. If you understand how the body is working, you're able to determine what the signs and symptoms are. So this is why I want to make sure you understand First off, the respiratory system, and then on Friday we'll talk about the cardiovascular system, although that's a two-hour lecture, but I want you to understand specifically those systems, okay? So, our do chapter eight, we're going to talk a, a lot more about the respiratory system and the cardiovascular system to understand the abnormal now of what's going on, okay? So, as far as the function of the respiratory system, back it up here. So, what are the functions? Let's see. Risa, you there. Give me a function of the respiratory system. Hi. Okay, so Hi. Um, it allows like oxygenated, like oxy oxygen, sorry, <laughs> to transfer throughout the body. There you the go. It, it brings in oxygen to the lungs. So that way the lungs feed the, the circulatory system, the capillaries, and then the, the venules, the veins. Um, and then the heart can push it out to the rest of the body. Good. Okay. All right. Um, let me see. Matthew, give me another function. Uh, 
He's in the restroom. No. Hello? Yeah, I'm here. Oh, another one? Yeah. Would be the external respiration. I can't say it. External respiration. I can't say it. External <laughs> respiration? Yes. Um, kind of, sort of, okay. Uh -huh. Just respiration and ventilation. Yeah. What does that mean? Yeah, when you breathe in, no? Inhale, exhale. Uh, I was trying to see if it talked about it here. I know it does uh, Respiration is a process of exchange of gases. Whereas ventilation is the mechanical process of breathing in and out. Okay. Respiration is the exchange of gases. Ventilation is the mechanical process of breathing in and out. So then, yeah, I, yes. I, I just answered my own question here, man. Because I was going to talk about like asthma, but never mind. Okay. Well, in a way, it's going to be a, a respiration issue because it's going to be difficult to exchange gases when you're not getting enough oxygen in yeah i answered my own question when right right before i actually asked i, I answered it okay so claudia takes a baseball bat to matthew hits him in the ribs oh and by the way there's there's no uh, so she won't get arrested because it's it's our EMT world, so it won't happen. Is Matthew going to be able to take a full deep breath? No. No. So because he can't do that, is that a rest respiration issue or a ventilation issue? Ventilation. Ventilation, why? Because the movement of the ribs are... Are not letting me breathe. They're not allowing you to take a full deep breath, so you're not. It's affecting your ability to to breathe in and out. It's going to be painful. Okay. Were you smiling, Claudia? Don't give her any ideas. It's recorded, so in case you didn't hear, you can just go back to the recording. <laughs> it's that three hours. I wouldn't do minutes. anything like that to anybody. Well, that's why I'm making you violent because you're you're very, very quiet. I am. All right. Uh, what else? Give me another function of the respiratory system. Doesn't help with organs. What was that? Doesn't it help with the organs? How so? It serves as a buffer to maintain normal acid. Okay, but let's go back to the to the previous statement. How so? No. Okay. Yeah, the one I was looking for is the, the acid base buffer. It, it helps maintain the acid base balance. <clears throat> you know, it make more sense when we talk about pathophys. But basically, 
the body doesn't like carbon dioxide. Okay. And remember that also when we talk about diabetes. I'm just trying to do this real quick. All right. Um, all right. So here are the components of the respiratory system. We have the nose or the nasal cavity, the nose, the mouth. And in the back of the nose and the mouth, we have the pharynx. So we have the nasal pharynx and the oropharynx, followed by the larynx. So uh, where your vocal cords are, that is the larynx. Then we get down to the, the trachea. So here's the trachea right here. So your vocal cords are right up in here, and then the tube goes down. Now, I'm going to highlight it so I don't cover it up, but this area right here, where the, where the triangle is right here, you have the trachea that goes down, and then you get to the point where it bifurcates. Bifurcates is the fancy word, so right in here, is where it divides into two. And, and so it becomes the right main stem bronchus and the left main stem bronchus. This junction right here, and I don't know why they test on it, but they do, and that's why I'm telling you. It's called the carina, C-A-R-I-N-A. -A. What is it again? Carina, C-A-R-I-N-A. Okay, carina. So that's where the trachea bifurcates into the main stem bronchi. The right and left bronchus. C A R I N E. Yeah, carina. Carina. All right, once we get past the, the, the carina, we get into the bronca, bronchus, then we get into bronchioles. O-L-E or O-L-E-S means little. So bronchiole is a little bronchi. Okay, little bronchi. Question, question. I A L you said means little? O L E S. Oh. O I E S. No. O L. Ole. O L E S. O L E S. Okay. Yes. Means little. So bronchial means little bronchi. Plural. Or little bronchus. Sounds like a baby dinosaur. All right, past the bronchioles, then we get to the alveoli. And the alveoli are air-filled sacs that takes in the oxygen, and that's where the actual exchange of gases occurs. So trachea, bronchus, bronchioles, and then the alveoli. And the bronchioles and the alveoli are located within the lungs. Mm -hmm. Trying to find it. So here, let me... Here, here, the upper part is called the upper airway. So up to there, upper airway. And then the rest of this 
is the lower airway. We just covered all those. All right. Questions? Uh, nope. Okay. So another another component here in the alveoli, I'm sorry, of the respiratory system is the diaphragm. Now the diaphragm not only does it serve as the border or the border wall between the chest and the abdomen but it also helps with breathing. The diaphragm is a dome-shaped organ, or I'm sorry, a dome-shaped muscle that contracts to allow the lungs to expand during, during uh, inhalation. The lungs themselves, they are covered by a lining called the pleural lining, as you see in front of me. Are you guys able to see my 1854 slide? Yes. 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 Okay. I just want to make sure, because the other class was like, no, we don't see it. We're on like five, six slides before. And I kept telling them, no, it's right there. No, we don't see it. It's right there. They're like, no, we're in slide, blah, 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 that one. So, and that morning class complains. <sighs> I'm just kidding. They're they're an interesting class. And yes, Jose, I say the same thing about you guys. Hey, well, I wasn't gonna say nothing. Well, I beat you to it. I appreciate. No, go back. You guys have this PowerPoint. <laughs> oh yeah. <huh? laughs> You're right. But I want you taking right, notes. So. No, no worries. I want you guys taking notes. So that's the respiratory system in a nutshell. Now, real quick, this up here. So this is what right here. That's your nose, right? The nostril. Yeah. Now, these are your nasal turbinates. Those actually help humidify the air that you breathe. This back area here, remember, this is the pharynx right in here. So that's your pharynx. So if this is the nasal area and this is a pharynx, what's this area called? Nasal pharynx. Nasal pharynx. And then here's the oral, meaning uh, uh, mouth. And this is the pharynx. What is this area called? Oral pharynx. Oral pharynx. Now we have called airway adjuncts. And we have nasal pharyngeal and oral pharyngeal. Where does it go and where does it stop, the nas nasal pharyngeal? And you guys will get to practice this. So it goes up the nose and it stops at the nasal pharynx. That's why it's called a nasal pharyngeal airway. And then the other one goes into the mouth, displaces the tongue, and it looks just like that. I have a hook. Goes into the mouth, stops at the oropharynx, and it's called oropharyngeal airway. Damn, you like how it's like coming together? <laughs> Building blocks. <laughs> I get excited about this stuff. Sorry. Now, smooth muscle. 
the bronchioles are smooth muscle. And so are some blood vessels. But uh, bronchioles are smooth muscle. And so do we have to think about contracting and relaxing smooth muscle? No. No. So that's a good thing. When we have vasoconstriction, what's happening is the vessel is getting smaller. It's getting constricted. And the other side, or the other end of the spectrum, we have vasodilation. Dilation means getting bigger. And specifically, vasodilation means that the vessel is getting bigger. Make sure you know that it's dilation, and not dilation. There's no, two, there's not two A's in it. It's dilation. Okay, so con constriction smaller, vasodilation bigger. And like I was saying, you have the lungs right here. And then you have a lining called the pleural lining. And in between here, this right here, that's in the lighter blue in there, that is a fluid. So you have two, two pleuris, okay? The visceral and the parietal. Visceral is right over the organ. The parietal is on the outside. And what does the lung do? So here's the lung, right? Here's the pleura. So what's that lung doing? Expanding. Yeah, it's expanding and contracting, right? Here's the pleura and here's my lung. So you see that gliding motion? Yes. That fluid helps lubricate the area. So it's this nice, smooth glow or flow, glide. Mm -hmm. Okay. So that fluid is there for lubricant to help with the, with the expansion and relaxation of the lung. Okay. Now, somebody had brought up asthma. And we talked about the negative things of asthma. Remember I said about a smooth muscle being involuntary? Yes. So look what happened to that bronchial. See how it's getting strangled off, it constricted? And then yes. what's worse, what was that? What's worse, you see all that stuff right there in yellow? And then yes. that's stripping out. Yes. That's mucus. And so look at how much air we're able to get through compared to how much air are we able to get through now? Very little, correct? Yes. Yeah. Here's the other thing for later on. So I want to see you guys do this. So I want you to constrict your mouth. Do this. Okay? And now push air through that constricted passageway. Let's hear it. Exactly. All right? That's a wheeze. So that's because that's an asthmatic. And that's what happens. The bronchioles get constricted. They build up mucus, and including mucus plugs. And because we're breathing in and actually breathing out, because the asthma, you have what we call expiratory wheezes, or the, the wheezing as we're breathing out. And that's what a wheeze is. That blood is getting pushed through that narrow passageway that wheeze 
Isn't that awesome? So again, it proves my point. You can't know what abnormal is until you know what normal is. Let's see, normal. Uh, I was trying to remember the words. Normal, abnormal. Oh, I love it when a plan comes together. <laughs> now, the respiratory system in kids compared to an adult, there are differences. There are differences. First off, the head is larger in proportion to, to an adult, okay? However, look how much smaller the area is. You see the trachea there compared to this trachea right here? A lot bigger. So that's the first thing. The other thing, and let me, let me get a marker instead of the highlighter so you guys can see. So a normal adult trachea is tube-shaped. Oh, that can't draw a straight line. For a small child, it's more funnel-shaped. The other thing is, let me go back to my highlighter. The tongue inside the mouth, the proportion is bigger. The tongue takes up more room in a kid. Now the other thing, obvious, the nose, bigger, same thing with the mouth, okay? Now, the trachea. Around the trachea, there's rings. And those are cartilage rings. Okay. Same thing with, an, with a child. However, as we grow up, as that cartilage becomes that that cartilage is there to keep or allow the trachea to keep its shape. Without it, like the esophagus doesn't have those rings. So we can compress and block off the trachea. I'm sorry, the esophagus. But we can't do that with the trachea because of that cartilage. But in a child, it's still not that firm. So it could still be closed off with some pressure to the neck. Okay. Now, earlier, just back it up. The tongue being bigger, person's unresponsive. The tongue is, is a muscle, so it relaxes as well when we're unconscious. So what's the number one airway obstruction? Tongue. The tongue? The tongue. So, easier obstructions with kids mainly, but with adults too. The tongue is the number one cause of, form, of airway obstruction. All right. So, structures. So, we have <coughs> ventilation. And again, what was ventilation? 
process of breathing? What was that? The process of breathing? The process of breathing, right? And the breathing is inhalation and exhalation. Inhalation is where we breathe in and exhalation is where we breathe out. Now, this is what we're going to talk about is the mechanics of inhalation. What is happening when we breathe in and out? Okay. Now, in order for, for us to be able to get air in, the first thing that's going to happen is or not necessarily the first thing, but one of the first things that happens is the intercostal muscles are going to contract. What is that going to do? I didn't hear. It. What was the question again? What the the intercostal muscles are going to contract. Intercostal muscles are muscles in between the ribs. Costal meaning rib. Like costillas, costal. Mm -hmm. Pushing, and, you're exhaling. Yeah, well, no, we're inhaling right now. As I'm inhaling, the intercostal muscles are going to contract. What is that going to do? Expand the diaphragm. No. no. The diaphragm is going to do it all on its own. The diaphragm is going to contract. The ribs go back to normal. No, no, no. We're in inhalation, not exhalation. So in inhalation, yeah, it's the ribs. What they're going to do, the muscles contract, it's going to open up the rib cage. It's going to pull it outward. Because the lungs are going to expand and they need their room to expand. Okay. And then the, the, the diaphragm, again, is going to contract, and it's helping to create that pressure, the increased pressure. Oh, right now it's going to be to create the negative pressure, actually. Okay. So, intercostal muscles contract, diaphragm contracts, opens up the rib cage, allows for air. And now what happens is, there's a, a pressure change. The pressure on the outside of the body is greater than the pressure inside the body. And because of that, that difference in pressure, that positive pressure lies on the inside and the air rushes in. So that's inhalation. The mechanical process is the intercostal muscles contracting, the diaphragm contracting, creating a negative pressure within the chest and allowing the air to go in, the positive pressure air on the outside to go inside the body. And we get the oxygen that way. Now, when we exhale, what happens? <clears throat> the what? The lungs recoil? The lungs recoil? Is that what I'm hearing? Okay. No. They don't really well, uh, yeah, I guess they do, but they don't. Uh, the muscles, the intercostal muscles relax. They go back down to normal, as does the diaphragm. Now, remember we were talking about the changes in pressure? Yes. So we have now a, a positive pressure within the chest, within the lungs. And on the outside, we have a negative pressure, or it's a lower pressure than on the inside. And so what's going to happen is now the air is going to go out. Because the positive pressure going to the negative pressure to try, to try to equalize it. Okay. Do you guys follow? Mm -hmm. Okay. 
So positive pressure, negative pressure. Intercostal muscles and diaphragm contract, and then they relax. So that's the mechanical process of breathing in and out. So you see here, lung ex the intercostal muscles up and out, diaphragm contracts, air goes in, goes inside the lung. In expiration, the muscles relax, chest, uh, the recoil. Yeah, it's, um, it's just the relaxation. So they go back to normal and the air goes out. Ooh. Boom. Okay. Questions on this mechanical process? Now, what did we say respiration was? We already talked about ventilation. Now let's talk about respiration. What did we say respiration was earlier? Gaseous exchange. Gas exchange. Which gases? Oxygen, Oxygen and carbon dioxide. Oxygen, carbon dioxide. Now. So we have, there's a bronchial, and then we get to the alveoli. Okay. The oxygen is going in. On the alveoli, we have capillaries. That's what the blue is here. Um, okay, so these are the, the capillaries. They're around the alveoli. Within the alveoli, or within the capillaries, I'm just kind of following it. So, just so you could see it better. So here's the alveoli. I'm sorry, here are the capillaries. And within the capillaries, we have CO2. Okay. So I'm just going to make big circles to represent the CO2. Although they're on the red blood cells. Up here, and actually, there's a little bit of CO2. And now, now this is the O2. There's still some oxygen left. Okay. What's going to happen is what I mean with the exchange of gases. This oxygen is going to come into here, into the capillary. And then this carbon dioxide so CO2 is going to go out of the capillary and into the alveoli. First off, what is that process called? And it's not respiration. I mean, it is respiration, the exchange of gases, but 
there's another word for that oxygen carbon dioxide exchanging. Anybody? Miss Antenna, what do you think? I'm sorry. What? What's that process of the oxygen going to the into the capillaries and the carbon dioxide going out of the capillaries into the alveoli? What is the process called or how does it do it? Okay, th that's a better question. How does it do it? There are pores. There are small pores. Okay. And so it's small. They're small enough so that oxygen and carbon dioxide can pass through to oxygenate the blood. Which creates a respiratory membrane. Huh? Okay, but there's there's a process other than respiration of that exchange of gases. So I guess it's not covered very well. But this is a concept you have to understand. It's called diffusion. Have you guys heard of that word before? Yes. Okay. And what what does diffusion say? So diffusion is oxygenation versus perfusion is blood, right? Uh, okay, somewhere. Diffusion is where a substance goes from air or a, a gas actually diffusion is where a gas goes from an area of higher concentration to an area of lower concentration okay so for example if you break a rotten egg or you 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 drop a stink bomb in one area it's really concentrated right but as it starts to expand and drift it's going to area lower concentration. So at first, the people in the front row can spell it, and they're like, "Ew, who, who ripped one?" But it wasn't. Mm -hmm. But eventually, the people in the back row, they're gonna be like, "What's that smell? Did Lou rip one again?" See, Dylan, can you smell it already? I saw you covering up your nose. So, um. The, the process where gases go from an area of higher concentration to an area of lower concentration. So as you can see here, you notice I put a lot of oxygen right up in here and very little here. Let me change to the highlighter. So you see all this oxygen up in here, right? But look how much oxygen was in here. So where's the higher concentration? Within the alveoli within the alveoli. And so diffusion says the air, a, a gas goes from an area of higher concentration to an area of lower concentration. Oh. So that's why we have that movement into here. Now, the, the on the other side of the spectrum, the carbon dioxide. How much carbon dioxide is within the bloodstream right now? Greater concentration. Major compared to the alveoli, right? So we're so just telling, us. telling us. Switch. Yeah. It's going from here to here. So again, what is the definition of diffusion? The movement from a higher concentration. To a lower concentration. Movement of gases from 
an area of higher concentration into an area of lower concentration. So, and so here's the better picture. You have the carbon dioxide. It's greater in here. So that's going to here, whereas the oxygen is coming in, going into there. And that's why right in here, this is deoxygenated blood. This is oxygenated blood. It's picked up what it came to do. Okay. So remember I said at the beginning, please, 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 if it, something doesn't make sense, please let me know. I want to make sure you guys are getting this. I might have to rewatch the whole thing just because my internet yeah. was in and out. So, because I'm, I like jumped back then and I was looking, I was like, what? <laughs> so I'll just rewatch the whole thing. And if I have any questions tomorrow, I'll just reach out to you. Okay, that's fine. How about the rest of you? Is it making sense? Yes. Yeah. So so. Yes. What what can I help you with, Leslie? Uh, with me, I'm just having a little trouble just because I have my child crying in the background, so it's been really hard for me to pay attention. Tell tell Kristen to start to stop slacking <laughs> off. Yeah, she's been crying nonstop. She's teething, so. Ah. Uh, uh, mm -hmm. And then they put mom anyway, so. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I know. I'm a mama's boy. I admit <laughs> it. I freely admit it. Um, so, yeah, just th there's two parts to breathing. There's the mechanical aspect of it to get the oxygen into our body and to get rid of the carbon dioxide. And then there's the actual respiration part of it, which is exchanging gases. So we need to get the oxygen to the bloodstream so the, the heart can push it throughout the body and do what it needs to do. And then the carbon dioxide traveling through the blood needs to get back to the lungs so we can go blow it out. Because like I said, the body doesn't like carbon dioxide. It actually treats it like an acid. So it tries to get rid of it. Um, is anybody familiar with Kuzma respirations? Like Kuzma breathing? Yes. They're kind of like short little breaths, but you can see the stressing in the intercostal spaces. Okay. And when does Kuzma respirations occur? I don't know with diabetics that have really high blood sugar. Actually, it doesn't have to be really high. Type one diabetics that have high blood sugar. And so a long story short, later on, uh, I will tell you what, what happens. But the, the, the punchline is that the body breaks down that, that high blood sugar. I'm gonna mute you real quick, uh, Santana. Um, the punchline is that the body breaks down the high blood sugar into carbon dioxide. And because we have a lot of carbon dioxide in the body, yeah, we get the kind of pursed lip breathing rapid because we're trying to get rid of that excess carbon dioxide. And in chapter eight, we'll find out why uh, the carbon dioxide is telling the body to breathe faster. But we've kind of said it, that body doesn't like carbon dioxide. In chapter eight next week, we'll talk about why it doesn't like it. Okay. All right. Did that help, Leslie? Yeah, a little. Okay. And again, don't, don't be afraid to send me a message or Call me or whatever, and we'll go over more. And that goes for everybody. Okay. All right. So here's another picture of it. I like drawing. Um, 
there's something else I wanted to tell you. Oh, somebody earlier had mentioned about internal and external respiration. And so we've already established what respiration is, which is, again, sorry. Respiration is the exchange of gases, right? Can you guys hear me? Okay. Yes. Yes. So, gases. External respiration is the exchange of gases where? I think it was Matthew that had asked me this earlier. Where is the external respiration occurring? Did you go to the bathroom again? I like how you're saying yes, Dylan. No, uh, I'm taking notes. What do you think, Anna? Um. Yeah, exactly. It, external respiration is the exchange of gases at the uh, alveolar level. So, flashcard. External respiration. The exchange of gases at the alveolar level. A L V E O L A R. Can you just say the last part one more time? Okay, let's see. Uh, I said that the, uh, the definition of external respiration is the exchange of gases at the alveolar level. Now, internal respiration, where does that occur, Ms. Sonia? Um, well, internal is inside, so. Okay. Um, What do you think it occurs? In the lung? No, nope. that's the external. Where do we want the oxygen to go? To our cells. To the cells. Good. So internal respiration would be exchange of gases where? In Into the cell. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Exactly. Internal respiration is defined as the exchange of gases at the cellular level. Right, Precious? She keeps hearing these lectures, so she's getting smart in her old age. She's all of 11, so she's old. She's like in her middle, mid thirties. Yeah, mid thirties, you start getting, getting to be old. Anyway. Thanks. Bye. Thanks. <laughs> For what? You're in your 20s. No, I'm in my mid-30s. Oh, whoops. <laughs> I see how it is, Lou. 
What? You're only in your 20s. Yes, I'm 25. Exactly. See, I knew it. Um, so, yeah, internal respiration, the exchange of gases at the cellular level. All right, moving on. So, as far as respiratory rates, I want you to remember several things. First one, the respiratory rate for three different age groups. And don't worry about adults, elderly, age between 5 and 10, and blah, blah, blah. Remember these numbers. Adults breathe 12 to 20 times a minute. Okay, remember that. Adults, 12 to 20. A child, ignore this one here. A child breathes between 15 and 30 times a minute. And the way you remember that is the low number is 15, right? If you double it up, you get what? 30. 30. So 15 to 30 is for a child. And lastly, an infant is between 25 and 50. So you get 25, you double it up, and you get 50. Okay. 25 to 50. Uh-huh. Yes. How much is it for an adult? 12 to 20. So what is it for a child? 15 to 30. 15 to 30. And an infant? 30 to 20. 50. 50. Good. The other thing I want you guys to remember is on National Registry and on tests, when it comes to vital signs, the one that the one that you're probably going to get asked on is respirations. Okay. Blood pressure changes too much, so does pulse rate. When they throw in a pulse question, it's usually going to be high or low, but you'll see it like really off. Okay. <clears throat> the one that is respirations. So remember those numbers. The other thing to that is remember this other set. And that is less than or equal to eight or greater than 24. Less than or equal to eight or greater than 24. When it asks you, how would you administer oxygen to that patient? The answer is going to be via positive pressure ventilation, PPP, or also a bag valve mask. Okay, just remember that. Less than or equal to eight or greater than 24, the way you administer oxygen is via positive pressure ventilation. All right. Questions? No? Okay. No, sir. So when mics have been on and there's not been dogs barking or babies crying or cars zooming by, have you heard anybody breathe? Or better yet, since my mic is continuously on, have you heard me breathing? 
Yes. You have? Oh. Only when you watch your video. Yes, yes. <laughs> okay. But right now, as I'm speaking, do you hear me breathing? No. No. Okay. If you see me right now, you're going to see me. Let me push back a little bit. I'm just leaning. If you don't, if you can't see, my legs are elevated. So I'm in my recliner. Does it look like I'm having a hard time breathing? No. 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 Remember what I said about knowing what normal is before you can know what abnormal is? Yes. Okay. So that's what I'm getting at. Because normal breathing is effortless. Am I working to breathe? No. It's effortless. It's quiet. Easy in and out. Now, all of a sudden, sorry, Pishus, all of a sudden, I'm leaning forward. <laughs> Did I have to work to breathe? Could you hear me breathing? Yes. Yes. Extreme close-up. What are my nostrils doing? Flaring. Flaring. <clears throat> my body is trying to get more oxygen in. And you why should, is that? You should run to the kitchen and then back and then you could notice the difference. What? <laughs> <laughs> Are you saying I, I get short of breath easy? <laughs> With that monster, yes. Oh, shots fired. Ooh, she's feeling froggy tonight. <laughs> <laughs> and I see your camera's off, so I don't see you drinking all those all those Starbucks. I'm not drinking coffee. Starbucks today. I've been in pain today. Well, caffeine helps. No, it doesn't. I practiced it. <laughs> you practiced it? You, you checked? Yeah. I had it since Oh, okay. Um, no. What, what happens is, like I said, you heard noise. You saw the effort. Nasal flaring. That's abnormal breathing. Again, no normal. It's quiet. It's effortless. Equal rise and fall. The abnormal is when you start hearing noises, when you see them working. They're doing other things. If you check, it's going to be high. If you count the respiratory rate, it's going to be high. If you listen to lung sounds, you might hear an abnormal lung sound. So there are things that are going to tell us that the patient is having a hard time breathing. Okay. See, I just told you all that stuff. All right. So um, it was Ricardo's assessment of the patient's breathing revealed respirations of 30 a minute. Is that normal or abnormal? Abnormal. Abnormal. And then breath sounds on the left side of the chest are diminished in comparison to those on the right side. Is that normal or abnormal? Abnormal. Abnormal. It's lung collapsed. Could be. Are the patient's ventilations adequate or inadequate? Inadequate. Inadequate. Why? Because he cannot fully inhale, therefore he can't get enough oxygen. Exactly. And so how are the patient's injuries affecting his body at a cellular level? It's the same thing. They're because being what was that? 
Uh, their cells are being deprived. Exactly. They're not receiving that oxygen. And so our perfusion, which we'll talk about in chapter eight, is being affected. It's not feeding it enough. And as we'll learn, the brain is going to throw a temper. It's that jealous girlfriend. It wants to be the center of attention. It wants everything. All right. Um, I think that one's it. Uh, yep. All right. See, we got all that done in the four hours. Okay. So, any questions? No, I'm going to have to rewatch this for another four hours. Yes. Or remember, I missed like the first hour of recording or the first. It was like. No, actually, maybe like 35, 40 minutes. No, well, see, so I picked up the beginning, but like right in the middle, I was like, I, I just couldn't. He's going to blame the... I'm going to do what? going to blame the spectrum people. All right. So, let me see. So, yeah, watch. Uh, I already got one of the videos in. I'll try and wait until the other one comes in. It usually doesn't take very long uh, before I, I, I leave my computer. Um... So that way you guys have access to it. Um, there will be a quiz on Friday. The first part of this. Hey, I don't want you guys to get soft. <laughs> and uh, it, it goes through uh, respiratory. Okay. And then Monday you'll have a quiz on, on the, the latter part of AMP. And then we do the skills. Yes. So as you come in on Monday, whatever time you guys come in on Monday, uh, have we established Monday yet? Yeah, we did. Yeah, we did. So, uh, you'll take the quiz. Like we and should just know that if any, if everybody already has time to go. Yes. So I got. Did you send it to me, Joanna? No, I just. I didn't quite hear that. Huh? What did you say again? Okay. Um, and we'll still have Friday to go over it, but um that's about it so what do you think about the human body so far i have a quick question yes does anybody else have trouble looking at the recordings or like watching the recordings or is it just me i do too i was yeah. a little bit you, on it too let me let me check something here i'm gonna share this with you guys so on the teams page so this is your team page. Are you guys going up here? You see where it says 614959 EMT? Mm. Click on that. I better open it up. There's the stream. There's the recordings. Now there's only one follower, so that's me. So... If you click on Microsoft Stream, the hell was that? Oh, test. Oh, you, you guys can't see it. If you click on it, it will take you to that page and just click on follow. Okay. And this is on Pearson, right? No, no, no. This is on Microsoft Stream. So I just changed over to the to my uh, I I am I'm using Chrome for it, but it opened up the Microsoft Stream page. You'll see this page right here, and so like I'm on, just click on follow, and you see that's where the the videos are. But 
the the team page actually links to this page right here. So as I get them, let me show you. Actually, I can't sh show you. Um, just real quick while I have you guys here, I already got the notice that the first part of the recording was already here. So I'm going to open it up. La, 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 la. So I'm opening it up. Do that. Add it to a group. Six one four. And you guys will pop up and save it. And now if I take you guys back to here and we go here and here and up here and you'll see the naked lady there she is down over here click You guys hear that? So if it's like it's being like logged in, like what was that? If it takes me way to like a login page, like you have to create an account or something. Did you already register for Microsoft? All you have to do is just register for Microsoft. Just register for Microsoft. And once you go ahead, once you register, you'll be able to actually see the whole. You'll be able to actually see the whole page. Until the until I until I need is just like a email. 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 Email ProAction has a Office 365 account, a business account, and so we have a lot of different Microsoft programs, and so we use those. So Stream is one, uh, Teams, we have uh, Excel, Word, Publisher, uh, PowerPoint, uh, a whole bunch of others. I mean, there's stuff in there I didn't know we had. See, there's Joanna there, there's Claudia, there's Cecilia, there's Vanessa, there's Sonia, uh, there's me. I'm like in every single one. Yuck. It's not fair. So. But I, ha I have been posting them. So. All righty. Yes, sir. All right. Anything else? I'm making the ghost writer. All righty. So, uh, again, please, please, please reach out if you need additional help. Uh, flashcards, repetition, association. Trust me, it works. Okay. Don't feel overwhelmed. This is just the intro, and this is just a, a broad uh, overview of it. Um, I get a little bit more in depth because, like I said, uh, the students that struggle with the registry, they struggle with with uh, the respiratory system and cardiovascular. Mm -hmm. So I want to make sure you guys understand it. 
and as we go as we progress along in the course you will see how it makes sense how we can correlate everything together okay so well i won't keep you guys any longer um i will see you guys on friday for the rest of this chapter okay and have a wonderful night you too. Nice. Thank you. Bye. 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 Bye.